In this video, we're gonna be installing this Musselman oil thermostat on a BMW N55 engine. Let's go. What's up everyone, I'm Steve and you're watching F33. Now if you like this video, give a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss when a new video drops. Now it's no secret that BMW engines run hot and the N55 is no exception. Some of the things that can increase your oil temps even further are living in a warmer climate, tuning for increased horsepower or hitting the track. Now the OEM oil cooler likes to keep temps around 250 degrees, which is absolutely insane. And I believe that the higher oil temps are what contribute to various gaskets failing more often than on other vehicles. So what do you do if you want to lower oil temps? Well, the simple answer is head on over to Keys Motorsports and pick up this Musselman oil thermostat. Now, when I ordered mine, I chose to also get the gaskets and the titanium bolts. While you're there, you should also check out some other cooling products like the CSF oil coolers, uh, intercoolers, and heat exchangers. Now, as always, I put links in the description below to all the products, tools, and specs needed for this install. So what makes this Musselman oil thermostat better than the OEM or some of the other upgrade options? Well, for one, it looks incredible. I mean, look at this thing, it's a work of art. Now, Musselman carves this oil thermostat out of a solid block of high-grade aluminum. And I mean, if you want some bling for your engine bay, this is it. Now, the main reason though, is that the temperature this oil thermostat keeps uh, the oil at is significantly lower. And I'm talking about 60 degrees lower. This is also a real oil thermostat and not one of those always open solutions. Now the main problems with uh, an open thermostat is that it can take your engine significantly longer to warm up. And with the Musselman, the engine warms up just as it normally would, but the thermostat opens up at a lower temperature. Now this is especially important for folks in a uh, colder climate that need their engines to warm up in the winter. Now, like I said earlier, I honestly believe that the main reason gaskets are so failure prone on BMW engines is because the heat that they operate at. Now, all right, so I am really excited to get this thing uh, installed in the engine. So why don't we head out to the garage and get this installed? The tools needed for this install are T30, E12, E10, E10 ratcheting wrench, 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 11 millimeter, and a torque wrench. If you're draining your fluids like I did, you'll also need seven quarts of oil and two bottles of BMW Blue Coolant. Now, before you start the install, you're gonna wanna make sure that your engine is cool. The first thing you'll need to do is remove your air intake and engine cover. Go ahead and remove your oil filter and drain some oil out of the housing. After you drain some oil, put the oil filter housing cap back on so that no contaminants get in. I also like to put a rag in the intake pipe to make sure that I don't drop anything in there. Go ahead and remove the 10 millimeter that secures the oil lines in place and disconnect the oil pressure sensor. This will allow you to remove the oil lines from the bottom of the oil cooler thermostat. Now I'm due for an oil change, so I've already gone ahead and drained my oil, but it's still a good idea to put down a ton of rags to catch any oil that might still be in the housing. Because we're also replacing the oil filter housing gasket at the same time, I've also gone ahead and drained the coolant to help avoid any cross-contamination that might occur between the coolant and the engine oil. This way we can start with a nice clean slate with fresh fluids. Next, loosen the T30 at the top of the oil cooler thermostat. Whether you've drained your coolant or not, there may still be some fluid in the upper radiator hose. Before you remove the oil filter housing and oil cooler thermostat, 
One trick you can do to avoid making a mess is to use a hose clamp. Now you can disconnect the oil cooler lines by pulling them down. You may get a little bit of oil that spills out, but once they're disconnected, you can swing those oil lines out of the way. Remove the three 10 millimeter bolts holding the thermostat to the oil cooler. Be prepared as there may still be some oil in there. This is probably the messiest part of the upgrade. If you're only changing the oil cooler thermostat, you can skip ahead. But for this video, I wanted to show the entire process to change both gaskets since they're both equally prone to failure. After removing the foam at the rear of the engine compartment, remove the five 11 millimeter nuts and two 11 millimeter bolts that secure the intake manifold to the engine. Once you have those removed, you can gently lift up on the intake manifold and slide it out of the way. You won't be able to move it too far, but you'll have just enough room to gain access to that rear bolt for the oil filter housing. Now, if you have trouble moving the manifold at all, you may also need to unplug your two O2 sensors. Once you've got enough room, remove the three E10 bolts, starting with the one at the rear. You won't be able to get a socket on the bottom bolt, but I found that an E10 ratcheting wrench works perfect. Don't worry about trying to get that bolt out all the way since there's really not enough room because of the coolant flange that's in the way. The last E10 to remove is the one at the top. As you remove the oil filter housing, you'll have enough wiggle room to get that bottom bolt out. Using a pick tool, disconnect the upper radiator hose clip and remove the hose from the oil filter housing. Make sure you clean the mating surface of the engine thoroughly so that you get a good seal. As I was cleaning mine, I noticed some dry oil around the edges of where the oil filter housing was bolted. That tells me that my oil filter housing gasket was about to fail. Remove the old gaskets from both the oil filter housing and the oil cooler thermostat. It looks like both my gaskets weren't too bad of shape as they were still pretty flexible, but depending on how old your gaskets are, they may actually be brittle and break apart as you remove them. Go ahead and clean everything really well. I'm also going to clean the oil cooler thermostat because I like to save the factory parts when I'm installing upgrades. I found that brake cleaner works the best at making them look like new, and there's really no risk of any of the parts getting damaged when using it. Now you can install the oil filter housing gasket. Make sure that it's seated really well before installing it on the engine. It only goes on one way, so don't worry about messing it up. As you can see, after cleaning the oil filter housing, it looks brand new. When installing the oil filter housing, I found it's easiest to first connect the upper radiator hose. I recommend starting with the bottom bolt first, which is the shortest of the three bolts. Make sure that you get it started by hand and don't tighten it yet. It's just the first bolt. You want to make sure that you compress this gasket evenly. Next, let's start with the longest bolt, which goes on the top, and then the medium sized bolt, which goes in the back. Again, be really careful not to cross thread the bolts. To make sure that the gasket compresses evenly, alternate between the three bolts, tightening them a little bit at a time. You can see as I tighten them how the oil filter housing moves and shifts. This is why it's super important to alternate between the bolts. The torque spec on these bolts is 22 Newton meters. You'll be able to torque the top and the rear bolts 
But the bottom one, you're just gonna need to do it by feel as there's really no way to get a torque wrench in there with a socket. Also, don't forget to reattach the oil pressure sensor. I'm gonna go ahead and put the filter cap back on just so that no debris gets in the housing. Now is also a good time to lock the upper radiator hose in with the clip. All right, now we're ready to reinstall the intake manifold. It's a tight fit, so just take your time and make sure that you don't get caught on any wires or hoses. The manifold gets secured by those five 11 millimeter nuts and two 11 millimeter bolts in the front. I like to start with the one in the middle first and then kind of work my way out in an alternating pattern. Torque down the manifold to 15 Newton meters, again, starting with the middle and working your way out in that same alternating pattern. This ensures that the manifold gets seated flush. If you unplugged your O2 sensors, don't forget to plug those back in. Now you can put a fresh gasket on for the oil cooler thermostat. Make sure that seat's in there nice and snug. All right, here comes the part we've been waiting for, the Musselman oil cooler thermostat. You can either reuse the OEM E12 bolts or use the optional titanium 10 millimeter bolts from Musselman to secure the thermostat to the oil filter housing. Remember to hand thread these bolts to ensure that you don't cross thread them. Now when securing the oil cooler thermostat, make sure that you alternate between the three bolts as you tighten so that the gasket compresses evenly. Go ahead and torque those down to 18 Newton meters. Now it's time to replace the O-rings on the oil cooler lines. Once you get them replaced, install them into the cooler thermostat. You should feel them click into place. Use the new longer T30 bolt from Musselman to secure the oil lines. This should be torqued down to eight Newton meters. Don't forget to resecure the oil cooler lines in place with the 10 millimeter that we removed earlier. All right, now it's time to finish putting everything back together. Let's go ahead and reinstall the air intake, vacuum line, air sensor, foam, engine cover, and strut brace. If you drained your oil and coolant like I did, it's a good time to start filling those back up. When filling up your coolant, add a mixture of 50-50 BMW blue coolant just below the max line and secure the cap. Make sure that you perform the BMW electronic bleed process. Now to do this with the car on, turn the heat all the way up and put your fan on its lowest setting. Then just step on the gas until you hear a gurgling sound coming from the coolant system. Now when adding oil, fill the oil filter housing up to the threads about three times. It's gonna take a really long time to drain, so while it's draining, go ahead and add the rest of your seven quarts as you would normally. I gotta say, I really love this oil funnel. It makes adding oil a breeze. Install a new filter in the oil cap and tighten it down to 25 Newton meters. Now that everything's put back together and we got all our fluids added, make sure to check for leaks before and after starting the engine. Also make sure that no fluids got on the belt. Now, as you saw, the Musselman oil thermostat from Keys Motorsports looks amazing, and I'm so happy to have this installed and protecting my engine. Now, if you're just installing the thermostat, it's about a 30 minute job. However, I'd recommend also replacing your oil filter housing gasket, as this is where much of the pain comes in. 
Now changing this gasket is about another 30 minutes, but again, I highly recommend it. I think it's well worth it. Now, as always, I put links in the description below to all the products, tools, and specs needed for this install. Now, if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button, smash it if that's what you're into, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you on the next one. God bless.